Hello, ladies and gentlemen, eighth graders of Reading School District. Today, we are going to work on citing textual evidence. We are going to become investigators, each in our very own mind. Today, we are going to get the proof to support any claim we may have. Today, we are going to work on citing textual evidence. We are going to take a look at the facts as we see them written and spoken, and we are going to give, say, and write exactly what those facts are. That is called evidence. What is the proof? What is the proof to support a claim? So, the word evidence is what we're really going after here today. Evidence, ladies and gentlemen, is the information that we have to support a claim. If we make a claim, I must support it with, with evidence. If I make a claim about the story, if I say Martin's mom was the sweetest lady I've ever read about, I would need to give examples to support that claim. A claim is usually just an opinion, or it could be something that someone is using to make a persuasive statement to you. A claim. Evidence is proof that what I say is true. So if I make a claim, I need to support it with evidence. When you write down what the author says, you are using evidence from the text. The evidence makes your claim very, very strong. Let's see how it's explained in this video. Hello, readers. Today, I'm in a courthouse watching people argue about laws so we can learn about the power of evidence. Evidence is essentially proof. It is the facts that help you know that something is true. Let's listen in. And, Your Honor, that is why we propose that cookies be made illegal. The prosecution rests. Hmm. Very interesting indeed. Objection, Your Honor. I may be a simple country lawyer, but even I can see that my opponent has neglected to offer up a single crumb of evidence in favor of banning all cookies, only heated and offensive anti-cookie slogans. Objection sustained. You will give evidence for your claims, or I will dismiss this case in favor of cookies. You have not yet proved that cookies pose a threat to public health. Show me where it says in our books of law that I even have the right to make this ruling. Both of you are going to need to give me evidence. Okay, so you can see that there are a couple of things happening here. There's a group of people who want to keep cookies, a group of people who want to ban cookies, and in the middle of it, a judge who has to decide which group of people is right. So, she asked them for evidence. If you believe cookies are bad, what's your proof? If you believe cookies are good in moderation, what's your proof? Let's step out of the courtroom for a second and go to this example in a text. I'm in big trouble. I forgot to do the social studies project last weekend. In my defense, I did have a very unusual weekend. My stepdad, Zeke, unexpectedly picked me up from school last Friday because he got free tickets to the Dodgers game. Then, since the game got over late, we decided to stay at my grandma's house because she lives sort of by the stadium. In the morning, she asked if we could paint her garage. Of course we did, but it took all day. On Sunday, I'm sorry to report, I devoted my entire day to watching Voltron. Let's try answering some questions that require us to look back at the text for evidence. This is like the bedrock of any kind of writing. If you make a claim, you have to back it up with evidence. So, did the author remember to do their social studies project last weekend? No. And why do we know that? They say so in the very first line. I forgot to do the social studies project. Okay, that's easy mode, you're saying. Fine. What did the author of this piece do on Saturday? 
You'll notice the word Saturday doesn't appear in the paragraphs above, and yet I could tell you with confidence and direct support from the text. How? Well, let's go back and look at the text. My stepdad Zeke unexpectedly picked me up from school last Friday, and we keep reading. Then, since the game got over late, we decided to stay at my grandma's house because she sort of lives by the stadium. So, the author and their stepdad spent the night, Friday night, at grandma's house. The story continues. In the morning, she, the grandma, asked if we could paint her garage. Of course we did, but it took all day. Which morning? Saturday morning! I'm pulling information directly out of the text to support my answer. The author spent Saturday painting their grandmother's garage. Ooh, hold on, let's head back to the courthouse. I think the judge is ready to issue her verdict and decide the case. This court will come to order, please. Order! Thank you. We've heard the arguments of the prosecution and the defense, both anti-cookie and pro-cookie, and now the time has come to give my judgment. The anti-cookie side presented a very interesting case, showing the effects of cookie exposure to teeth and the dangerous effects of having too much sugar and feeling all wibbly. But the pro-cookie side also gave very compelling evidence, showing that in moderation, a cookie can be a very tasty snack indeed, provided that you treat them for what they are, something to have every so often. This court finds in favor of the cookie. Thank you. Wow, readers. I think we just witnessed something important and historic, and it couldn't have happened without the power of evidence. You can learn anything. David out. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So the power of evidence. If you have a claim, you need to back it up with evidence every single time. Otherwise, it is a very weak claim. So when we were thinking about, or when I was thinking about providing you with the opportunity to learn a little more about finding evidence, one of the types of mediums that we use in American society is advertising. Very often claims are made for things that we should buy. Very often, every single ad that comes on your television, or I guess even your computer, is trying to convince you, persuade you, making a claim that their product is the very best for you. So with that being said, as a consumer, as someone who is going to buy something, you need to start becoming more and more aware of the evidence to support a claim. Just from today's lesson alone, you should realize that a claim can be made that something is the best, but do you have the evidence to back it up? What makes it the best? We're going to take a look at two quick ads, and we're going to see if each of these ads offers clear evidence that we should buy the product. We're going to start off by looking at a quick little ad on Flex Tape. The company advertises that it's strong, rubberized, waterproof tape. Let's see if they can give us evidence to support their claim. The claim? that it's strong, it's rubberized, it's waterproof, and it's flexible. So let's see if their claim is supported with evidence. Hi, Phil Swift here for Flex Tape Clear, the super strong waterproof tape that's clearly the best way to patch, bond, seal, and repair. Flex Tape's triple thick adhesive instantly bonds to the surface, stopping the toughest leaks while remaining virtually invisible. Plus, Flex Tape Clear is so strong, it even works underwater. Now you can repair pools and spas with a clear watertight seal and even make quick repairs without changing the look of your beautiful surfaces. Now it's easy to fix rips and tears. Plus, Flex Tape Clear holds on tight, even when wet. Flex Tape Clear is perfect for emergency auto repairs and lets light pass right through boats, campers, trailers, and RVs. All right, so we took a look at the flex tape, and the flex tape pretty much held in all of that water. He showed us a whole lot of what that flex tape can do and tons and tons of evidence through basically just watching him use it. 
the examples of the things he used the tape on and they immediate that tape immediately made the water stop it's pretty strong stuff so i'm pretty much sold that it is waterproof and it's probably pretty strong and i'll keep in mind if i need a strong waterproof tape that i might need to get some flex tape on the other hand we have an advertisement here for a chevrolet we want to look at this advertisement and see if they offer clear evidence that we should buy a Chevrolet. All right, so that is Chevrolet advertising to us that we should consider buying a Chevrolet. The question there is, did you have evidence supporting a Chevrolet? Did the advertisement give us any supporting evidence that Chevrolet is the product when I go out to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a car did that commercial support the value of what I'll be getting if I buy a Chevrolet instead of a Ford or a Toyota or whatever other car we might want to go out and buy? So no, um, it did not give a whole lot in the way of evidence. The only thing that um, could be arguable with that is that maybe Chevrolet's last a long time, therefore they're durable because the doggies seem to have lived through a full life and the same car was there when they got the puppy as, um, as a car that was there at the end. So with Chevrolet, um, they didn't offer a whole lot in the way of examples and what we're looking for in the way of evidence to say yes absolutely here are all the clues here are all the facts here it all is write it down memorize it and you've got all of this to be an expert on a chevrolet yeah so the claim of buying a chevrolet that's the car you should buy may be a little weak if we try to rely on that commercial to gain evidence on why you would want to buy a chevrolet over any other car now we have to turn back to being investigators of our own in the language of literature. In the short story, we read the medicine bag. We saw that Martin had acts, thoughts, beliefs, and an overall attitude change. Now, I am purposefully not telling you what that change could be defined as. I want you to come up with that word, but he did go through some changes from the beginning to the end of the story. We all saw that. We shared it together. And we understand today a little bit more about finding evidence. So we're making a claim that Martin, his acts, his thoughts, beliefs, and the overall attitude changed from the beginning to the end of the story. Well, Okay, that's a claim. It changed from the beginning to the end. Really? I didn't think he changed. I thought he was the same the whole way through. That could be my argument. You could then come back and say, oh, no, no, no. I have evidence from the text that shows you Martin changed. So then in your detective suit, you would look closely at the story and see that on page 17, paragraph 42, at the beginning of the story, Martin was thinking, 
I didn't know what to say. That could be a clue or some evidence about thoughts Martin had at the beginning of the story. If somebody doesn't know what to say, they're not very confident. They don't feel very sure of themselves. So at the beginning of the story, you could probably say Martin was insecure. Martin didn't know what to say. I mean, he was shy, maybe, afraid, perhaps. You would have to come up with your own word, but that could be a clue as to what his acts or his thoughts were at the beginning of the story to support whatever claim it is you're making. I'm going to jot that down. I didn't know what to say. Page 17, paragraph 42 for the beginning of the story. I'm going to continue to read. On page 18 in paragraph 56, I see Martin thought, I was proud of him and amazed at how respectfully quiet my friends were. Hey, this might be a clue or some evidence about a thought Martin had toward the end of the story. This is when his friends came over and he actually had a thought about being proud of his grandfather and how impressed he was with his friends. Being proud of your grandfather or being impressed with your friends isn't something that most people who are immature even know how to be or do. But as you mature, you do become proud of people, more and more proud of people, and you become more and more impressed with different people as you observe them and as you go through life. So I'm going to jot that down on page 18, paragraph 56, toward the end of the story, Martin thought I was proud of him and amazed at how respectfully quiet my friends were. So you just saw that Martin went from being speechless to being proud of his grandfather. Wow, that was a pretty big change. And if you were making a claim that Martin changed, however you want to make it, you might want to rely on those two pieces of evidence that you wrote down to back up your claim about how Martin changed. So as we read, eighth graders, we're going to keep thinking about evidence and clues we find about the characters, the setting, the plot, and even the author. We're going to write them down. When we talk about a story, we're going to become experts because we have evidence. We wrote down things that were important to a claim that was being made. Where are we going to write these things down? Funny you should ask. Your teacher should have provided for you in your Google Classroom today an evidence log. This evidence log is something you're going to see from time to time this year as we're talking about stories, specifically when we're talking about citing evidence. And if you remember back to RACER, C, R A C, was for citing evidence and E was for explaining and elaborating on that evidence. So with citing evidence, this is exactly what we're going to use this sheet for. We're going to jot down what our position or our claim is. I believe Martin changes from being blank to being blank from the beginning to the end of the story. You're going to have to come up with those words yourself. You can work with your teacher to come up with how you want to fill that in. And then down below, you are going to cite evidence from the story to support your claim. That means you're going to go back through the story and find some things that happened that support how Martin changed from the beginning to the end of the story. When you are through with that, you're going to turn it into your teacher, and then you're going to go practice a few more activities with identifying evidence. And when you're finished, you need to be proud. You just became one step closer to being an amazing red night learner and an eighth grade top notch reading investigator. Happy studying, everyone.